everybody, this is Cameo Finance and I'm coming to you with a Splinterlands video. Um, I was playing the game earlier today and I was having lots of errors, um, RPC errors. I kept on getting kicked out of games. Uh, my deck was not displaying all of my cards, so the battles that I was able to get into, I was not even able to use the cards that I wanted. Um, so my rating was just over a thousand. Um, this morning and then uh, after losing five games in a row I headed over to their discord and it appears that uh, here we go scaling issues due to tremendous growth fixes coming um, this was at 11.03 a.m. so that was like two minutes ago um, at least that this person reposted that uh, crypto raptor who is this I don't know if they're a mod or whatever check roll monster map so I guess they're they're like a higher up person in I don't know this seems pretty legit right here though scaling issues um, and they're referring to stuff on the hive uh, PPT website so here we go official from splinterlands two days ago and right here this is the workaround, so you can change your Hive nodes, and it's super easy. Um, you just open up your keychain wallet inside your toolbar over there. <clears throat> Hit the little hamburger menu right here, top right. Then you scroll down to Preferences, and uh, on your RPC node, you're going to choose a new one. And how you can find a good one is uh, someone inside this chat here posted this benchmark tool. So I'll go ahead and leave this inside the description as well. But this is going to be the uh, Hive node benchmark test. Um, I already did it for mine. It was the Hive blog API. So that's what I switched to. And after switching to that, um, I feel like my game is working a lot better. So I'll just play a quick match for you and we'll see if I can get into the match and if I can select the cards I want. Because before it was an absolute nightmare. I go to make my team, my cards aren't even there. So me, I am a plant enthusiast. I really like to cheese the crowling, uh, my lord of crowling. Uh, I'll do a build video later, but essentially he has thorns, and so I build my whole entire team around that. I guess while I'm building it, I'll, ch I'll go over why I'm choosing each one. The stone splitter orc, I think, is the best card for the plants, just because he has a retaliation ability. Uh, and when you mix that with thorns, it's really cool. I, I like to choose a failed summoner to deflect some magic attacks, a uh, goblin thief, just for some... Uh, he's got a two attack and he can hit from distance, he's a ranged attack. Okay, so that leaves me with eight points left. Now I'm going to go with a strong archer, as well as... I always put Epona on there. Um, the reason why I set up my team like this is that every time that someone attacks me, um, most of the time they're going to get a Thorns. And uh, Epona is going to give all of my characters plus one health. And the Wood Nymph is going to you know, restore two to three health um, to a character each turn. Um, so just to kind of... Uh, keep the uh, ranged attackers on the enemy team, they'll attack my Epona. And, uh, and so she kind of kites away those attacks away from my healer. A lot of people fail to do that. Um, same thing with the failed summoner. He doesn't even attack. He doesn't have an attack. And I think a lot of people really kind of miss out on opportunities because they're like, why would I spend two points on a character on my team that can't even attack? But when you're given like a good amount of points, like 27 mana for a fight. I think having a character there that can deflect attacks as well as absorb some of that incoming damage from the enemy team away from your healers, um, that they're super useful. Um, especially when 
paired with my Laura Crowley uh, in my specific build because when they attack any of my characters, there's a chance that uh, that they're going to get thorns. So let's see how this battle goes. So in my opinion, this is a pretty weak character to have up front. This one's going to go down first. He's got his healer in the second spot, which is pretty strange. And then he has like, okay, he's got ranged, and this doesn't make sense for him to have. I guess for the reach ability. That makes it so this person could, it's just that this is a bad build. Uh, I think I'm going to win this. There's my buff coming in from the people that I live in. And there you can see the vines do a lot of damage, especially to characters that uh, have very fast attack. So see, this is where this guy really starts kicking butt right here, the stone splitter orc, because every time that I get attacked, they get a they get a vines, a thorns. And there's also Retaliate, and I also get to attack for 3 damage, so super underrated card in my opinion. So there's this main DPS down. My Stone Splitter Orc is back up to 5. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, my win rate, uh, when I'm actually paying attention to my points, um, around this same general strategy, I'll use it almost every single time. Um, and uh, as long as I'm paying attention, I will win most of my fights. Every now and then, I'll come across a perfect counter for this build, um, but I do think this is going to have at least a... 60% win rate if you do it right. So if you want to see a build video on how I kind of adapt this strategy to different mana amounts, um, leave a comment in the description uh, if what you learned today was you know useful. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Definitely like the channel, it helps me out a lot. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.